Hi, I'm Alyssa Bennett. I'm the small mammals biologist for the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department, and I'm here to teach you a little bit about bats and bat houses. We are here at the Sandbar Wildlife Management Area in northwestern Vermont, and we're looking at a group of bat houses that have been installed on a barn. There were bats originally living in this barn many years ago, and the bat houses were placed here to encourage the bats to take up residence in a space where their droppings will be left on the ground instead of the lumber inside the barn. As a result, the bats voluntarily moved into these bat houses, and that's been making it very easy for us to count how many bats are here each summer. And it turns out fall is the perfect time of year to think about cleaning out your bat houses and checking to see if they need to be maintained. Bat houses can degrade over time, so it's important to look at the outside, check to see if there are any leaks. Just like you, bats want to stay warm and dry, so we want to fix any of those holes with caulking, maybe put a fresh coat of paint on. That helps attract the warm solar radiation that keeps bats nice and hot. When you have bats gathering in a bat house, there are actually a number of females that are getting together to raise their young. And when they fly out at night, they leave those pups behind in the bat house for those pups to stay warm. So we like to have a nice black bat house face. Here we have a south facing area and that allows it to absorb that sun to keep them nice and hot. And the bat droppings in this case are able to drop right down to the ground. And so that makes it very convenient for you as a homeowner. It's a great place if you wanted to plant some flowers. This guano we call it, which is bat droppings is actually an incredible fertilizer. It's very high in nitrogen. So because of the cool weather, when we're here late in October, it means that bats have moved on to their winter hibernation areas. So in this case, we're going to be taking advantage of this time to clean out what we usually find inside our wasp nests or mud dauber nests. And in this case, you do want to be sure there are no bats inside. So we have certain equipment with us today. We have a flashlight so we can check and see and make sure there are no bats inside before we clean it out. We also have a ladder so we can get up to these high spaces. A proper bat house placement is going to be up high. In this case, you want the bottom of the bat house at least 10 feet off the ground if you can. The next piece of equipment we're going to need is something to scrape those nests out. And because bats are roosting in very narrow spaces with three quarters of an inch being the ideal roost space when you're building the baffles of your bat house, we need to find something that will fit up in that space and that could be as simple as a scrap piece of lumber that you cut that will fit inside there. We'll use this to scrape up inside. It's time for us to go up and look inside our bat house before we clean it, just to make sure no bats are left. This is a cold time of year, so we expect they've all gone to hibernate in caves and mines underground, but we want to be sure. So I have my heavy duty flashlight here, which is very strong light, especially when you're looking up towards the sky on a bright day, it helps to have a powerful light. And I'm going to put my mask on because if there were bats inside, I want to make sure that I'm still using precautions around COVID-19 so that there's no chance that I could be passing the virus on to bats. Here we go. No bats left in here today. Now that we know there are no bats inside, I'm going to head up to clean out the wasp nest that I observed in there. I'm going to put on some safety glasses so that I don't knock anything into my eyes. I'm going to place my mask on to make sure to protect the bats from the virus. And I'm going to bring my handy dandy stick. In this case, it's probably somewhere between a quarter of an inch and a half an inch. And in this, this case, it's a piece of what looks like an old molding to go inside a house. But you can use any kind of scrap lumber that's long even a yardstick if you still have something so old fashioned.
Ooh, good thing for those safety glasses. We got most of them. That's how it's done. We've finished cleaning out our bat houses now, so we can look forward to bats returning in spring. Usually in April and May, most of our bats come back and take up residence in bat houses, barns, and attics again. But we know it was important for us to get these wasp nests out during a time of year when the bats are gone and the wasps are not active because they can in fact crowd the bats out. We've had cases where bat houses were completely filled with those nests and bats will keep moving but eventually they get crowded out and they can actually be stung. So this allows bats to have those spaces back again when they return in the spring. For more information about bats and guidance on either purchasing or building your own bat house, you can check out our website at vtfishandwildlife.com and you can also contact us directly. We'll provide you with some resources and even some plans if you'd like to build your own bat house.